Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War I Am Brute event, in which the War Gear Brute is added to the game. Of course, one of the biggest things that ended up happening this week was the version 4.7 patch that got fully initialized uh, yesterday. Uh, we covered that in a video course uh, yesterday as well, so if you want to go and catch that, that'll be up in the top right corner underneath the eye icon, as I won't be mentioning much about it in this video, since we covered it in depth yesterday. Yesterday. However, we did get quite a few good things this week, including the fact that the Doomed Glaive used for one of the best teams in the game is available this week, as well as a new pet and a bounty hunter this weekend. So let's get into the troop. This troop is mostly going to be geared towards early game. You're never going to use this later on in the game, but from a uh, early game, mid game kind of perspective, it might be okay as a cleanse option. It destroys a row which means you do accumulate the mana for that, gains a okay amount of life, which gains additional five life for every single green that you end up destroying. And the most beneficial thing about this is for 10 mana cost, he gets to cleanse all other allies. There are better cleansers out there like Apothecary and such. However, this is a pretty decent one, uh, given that he can have a little bit of board control while also having a uh, life gain. Uh, also rather interesting is he set up very similar to that of Hall of Guardian troops in that he has both a score reduction while having a spell reduction, which I believe is the only troop that has that combination outside of the actual Guardians, or those four uh, ones from Hall of Guardians, I should say. So a little bit interesting. Unfortunately, it does have pretty low values for it, so that combination isn't really going to do that much. Actually, there is a Mythic that has it too, but it's a Mythic, so <laughs> a little bit uh, more unobtainable. But uh, it's a nice early game version that has it that isn't simply just the um, Hall of Guardian troops, so that'll be a little nice. It'll synergize pretty decently with Wargear teams, obviously, since Wargears are pretty heavy on green, uh, more often than not, and uh, this will actually be able to fit within them. Uh, War Gears aren't particularly meta at the moment. There's not any kind of insanely good combos, but of course, since yesterday when we ended up getting the uh, six new Guardians, one of them is a War Gear buff, and since that is so obtainable in early game, that combined with War Gear Brute will probably be a decent combo for um, probably up to about level 1000 or so, and maybe even some other situations as more combinations become uh, available. Obviously, don't not take your tributes. Those are always uh, good to uh, end up uh, going for. As far as event keys this week, uh, we have... Uh, um, a new legend. So uh, as far as event keys, it of course is McGrim Woods, as it is a McGrim's Wood event week. If we go over here and go over to the Kingdom of McGrim Woods and then click show all if you don't already own everything from uh, McGrim Woods, you will end up seeing uh, all the trips that are here. Uh, every single thing that you see here is available except for nothing. Never mind, everything is available. Uh, I thought we would have had something. Nope. Every single thing that you see here is within the event key drop table. Unfortunately, most of this is useless. This is the new legend that came in. Deals damage to an enemy. And then either submerges them or devours them or transforms them into a daemon and knocks them to the back. All of these, except the devourer, is completely useless. And given that that's only 33% chance, I'm pretty sure this will never be used. It's the same coloration of Yagwe, and you're likely just going to use him instead. I don't really see any uh, situation where Krampus will end up being better than a Yagwe. So you could pretty much just ignore this thing. You might still want to get it, obviously, for completionist purposes. However, from a is it useful purpose, this is pretty much dead content immediately. Uh, it doesn't have anything special. There's already several other troops that have uh, Curse on Skull. And... Um, the only slightly redeeming thing is that it gets to do some damage to a random enemy when matching red gems. However, there's already things that could do a higher amount of damage uh, than that, such as Taloka, which can do 10 to a random enemy for simply doing an extra turn, or something like Thief, which could do 7 damage to the last enemy uh, for every single extra turn, both of which will be more effective than what this thing could do. So overall, pretty much dead content, but he is new uh, as of this week within the uh, event key drop table. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing is particularly good from this kingdom. Uh, most of the better things from this kingdom are all lower rarity like things like spirit fox things like moon singers things like spirit dancer uh things like uh cockatrice which is actually among one of the best in this uh kingdom as well as dire wolf both are only rare and common so all these things you likely already have all the actual useful components the only thing that's somewhat useful that is of slightly higher rarity from here is forest guardian which is a legend however ever since um mirage queen has been added from the underworld for the elemental 50 percent bonus you don't really use this as much for the 50 percent beast bonus as quite a few of the better beasts actually have overlap with elemental that you would end up using that for anyways so you can end up just giving them the elemental bonus instead and kind of never need forest guardian so overall probably a good week to skip event keys unless you just really want the uh new content uh but if you earlier on in the game uh, maybe throw down like 10 or 20 just to make sure you guarantee you have like spirit fox spirit dancer stuff like that uh, some of the more better utilities uh, from the kingdom however other than that you're not really going to need to use uh, event keys 
uh, this week. As far as some of our uh, other things that we have going on, 10% to all war gears, 10% to all monsters. This unfortunately has uh, nearly no overlap. Uh, and uh, you also get 40 souls whenever you end up using the brute in explore. So if you use an explore team, that can uh, easily end up putting a anything in fourth slot. Like if you're running the lower level ones just for quick kills, you can end up getting a little bit extra souls. Uh, again, generally with these extra soul ones, I don't really advise going for as doing proper soul farming with like dragon soul and dragon soul plus ferris raws or even just dragon soul with necromancy options tend to be better rates than what you could ever get by simply getting an additional 40 per uh, battle and uh, overall is generally never worth going for uh, those specific events hopefully they'll update them eventually because they haven't been viable for a very 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 long uh period of time now anyways next up we have ourselves, of course guild wars this week uh main thing to really mention with guild wars uh as of this most recent patch there are two slight changes. Now you'll only have to worry about the 27 out of 30. So basically what will happen now, which is actually kind of funny because we're uh, up against a guild where this will be perfect for them right now. So as of this most recent patch, um, Guild Wars will only count your highest 27 uh, participants uh, for every single one of the uh, Guild Wars. Basically, uh, if you have uh, 30 members uh, or any amount of members, it'll only end up counting the 27 highest scores that you end up happen having. Obviously, if you have 26 or less members, this won't really be that relevant. However, if you have 27 or more members, this will make it so if you had someone inactive or you had to kick someone for whatever reason or need to recruit someone or any other number of reasons, it will not really penalize you now since uh, you'll have at least a three-player leeway uh, for every single guild war so that's going to be pretty cool and as you can see uh, intentionally or unintentionally the guild we're up against right now is actually utilizing that in that they currently have 27 members which means even though they have 27 members they will actually not be penalized at all for this uh, guild wars I believe from a day-to-day -day basis they could still have a higher chance of losing however when it finally gets to the overall final score um, it will just go based on 27 out of uh, 30 for the leaderboard so they won't be in any disadvantage for that specifically so that's pretty cool change and it makes it a lot better to uh, uh it just has a lot more leeway uh for if people go on vacations or any other number of things that could possibly happen on a guild war week so pretty cool overall the other thing that they ended up adjusting is if you make first place within your bracket now you get 50 gems uh this is pretty relevant particularly for uh, lower guilds since 50 gems is almost double your loot or you literally double your loot but it's also pretty relevant for this kind of area here if you're not in uh bracket one because if you're around like the bracket uh let's say five to 20-ish area and maybe even a little bit lower than that uh, or pretty much all the way down lower than that you will be getting quite a bit more of a benefit by potentially being at a slightly lower bracket which is kind of weird because for example we're in bracket uh, six right now however if we get first place in bracket six uh, we will end up getting 150 gems, which is more than a good majority of guilds in bracket 2, 3, 4, and 5 will be getting. Which is kind of weird how that is, but uh, yeah, you basically just get a free 50 gems if you make first place in your uh, bracket. It's obviously not game-changing getting only 50 gems, but uh, hey, it's a little bit extra for actually being able to go all the way for first. And that's applicable to literally every single bracket. If you make first place, you now just get an additional 50, which technically means that rank 1 now gives uh, 1,550 gems. Since obviously always making rank 1 would end up giving you the additional... Uh, 50, but even if you're all the way down at like bracket uh, 200, uh, if you make first place in that bracket, you are basically doubling your uh, your uh, loot. So definitely uh, worth considering trying to aim for the uh, first place whenever you can, as it's quite a substantial amount of uh, increase to... Uh, it's not like a really perfect kind of reward. I wish they would have done something slightly different for incentivization, but uh, it's, it's still nice nonetheless just to uh, give some kind of additional resource rather than making first place. You just move up like a few brackets and then boom, nothing else. Um, so they just basically added a small way of uh, rewarding that as of uh, currently. Anyways, other than that, uh, of course, we just have standard Guild Wars this week. Uh, as far as uh, teams for that, we do have the new Six Guardians, as we mentioned yesterday. This is what I'm currently running with, is if anyone wants to uh, just see. Uh, I know some people ask on occasion, so I don't always end up showing it, but I did want to show it this time as I have revamped a couple of them. Uh, oddly enough, I'm even using Guardian Crown. Guardian Crown is available on this Tuesday. I generally do not use this weapon. Uh, however, I figured I'd give it a test just to kind of see how it'll end up going. Uh, very few things within the game have a movement option and is available as of this Tuesday for whenever there's a Hall of Guardian event. Not really one of the best weapons in the game, but use it ever so occasionally. It's like the first time I'm using it in months, it feels like. But anyways, speaking of that... There are quite a few things going on this week. Uh, this Tuesday, of course, today, we end up having a Hall of Guardians event. Uh, only thing particularly relevant about that is if you want to go to 500 Pure Faction on that, you can. I'm personally still trying to stick it out by not throwing gems at it. We'll see how good we'll do. <laughs> but um, 
Other than that, uh, you can get the crown from there, as I just mentioned. It's in Soul Forge as well. However, if you don't want to race diamonds, it is also available for what is that? 410? Yes, 410 uh, gems. You'd be able to go and uh, get it for if you want to go and uh, do it that way. Plus, it will help you do a bunch more uh, factions in here for the event. But uh, there's that, and it's also in Soul Forge if you want to get it that way for this Tuesday. And other than that, uh, we have a few other things going on this week. This Wednesday, we are getting a McGroom Woods troop, uh, or McGroom Woods pet, I should say. McGroom Woods, obviously not the best of synergies as far as kingdoms are concerned, but also not one of the worst. Uh, Forest Guardian 50% to all beasts is probably the more useful thing that you can end up doing with a pure um, McGroom Woods team. Also keep in mind that the Warden Hero class does count, of course, as McGroom Woods as well. Speaking of that, this Thursday, we, of course, have a Warden Hero class. In the past, I would have said this is completely useless. However... Uh, Warden's actually really, really good with, uh, Gob Truffle teams, and now that we just got Doomed Glaive back in the, uh, in the game as of this week, it is, uh, definitely worth considering possibly leveling it up some. Uh, you don't really need to get it to 100, but getting it to 70 is worth considering. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go all out on 70, but, um, getting it eventually to that point is worth considering if you want to run the, uh, Truffle teams as it does gain a little bit more of a benefit off of the 70 perk and that it gains Dispel, which allows you to get rid of Submerge and other similar positive status effects that the enemy might have. Uh, other than that, Bounty Hunter this Friday. It's basically going to be a troop that ends up buffing up your first troop in Bounty Hunter. Seems like it'll have some potential. We'll have to mess around with it once it uh, ends up getting here. Other than that, uh, so, so Forge, a couple of relevant things to uh, mention here. As far as uh, troops are concerned, uh, while I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way for it, Divine Ishbala is within the uh, drop table right now. She was so strong that she had to get nerfed both on her ability and on the fact that she has a spell, uh, or uh, the first thing that has a under 50% spell start for typing. They had to nerf it down to 40%. This happened several months ago. However, even after the two nerfs she got, she is still very relevant, um, particularly in Divine Ishbala plus Quillen, though in any Divine team as well, she is pretty high up there as far as overall strength and is a one among one of the better uh, double converts that are uh, out there. So it's worth considering. However, for the most part, uh, I would say Aquaticus is the uh, main thing to go for this week if you are planning on getting uh, something uh, as far as any of the uh, Mythic slash Legends are concerned. And the main reason for this is uh, she's basically like a alternative version of Infernus. Some situations she's stronger, other situations she's not. There's a bunch of Light Splash, which is normal damage to a single target, and then 25% to the two adjacents. Ends up hitting three of them, which means it has the highest overall damage of any of the Infernus-like troops that currently exist in the game. And it explodes half the blues on the board, so it ends up getting an explosion that can be very similar to that of a Infernus. However, unlike an Infernus, or um, uh, Infernus, unlike this, uh, doesn't have a hard counter, whereas this can be hard countered by removing all blues off the board, which not only blocks its mana, but also blocks its explosions. So do be wary of that. Uh, other useful thing it has, though, is 25% uh, spell reduction into Submerge All Allies, making it the best Submerger in the entire game. This is very rarely useful, however, if you can hard counter an enemy team with Submerge, this becomes an extremely good utility troop, since all you need to do is one extra turn, and then they can no longer hit you for AoE damage until you end up casting or taking a Skull, in which case you can just take another extra turn and get it right back on. So, uh, nice utility to have. Uh, not an absolute must-have. Um, it might be in top 10, but it's um, something you eventually want to get around to. It's definitely not one of the highest priorities to go for, though, as far as Mythics are concerned. And also, somewhat relevant, Uriali, while overall not nearly as good of a troop, she is pretty relevant in that she's used in Scorpius meta. Uh, of course, Scorpius plus uh, Uriali can be used to uh, double kill anything that doesn't have immune to poison. And this is a pretty good combo right now for Explorer, particularly in the Urskaya Kingdom, which currently has zero immune to troops with uh, poison. So uh, this ends up working out pretty well, as this is the best poisoning option in the entire game, being able to do extra turn, a single extra turn, in order to get the entire enemy team uh, poisoned. So worth considering if you've been needing to pick that up for your uh, Scorpius team, if you've currently been just using Web Spinner or Shadow Dragon for it instead. Other than that, uh, of course, weapons, very, 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 very relevant. If you get any one thing this week, it should be this. Doomed Glaive, if you don't already have it. It's arguably the best Doom weapon in the game of the six uh, good Doom weapons. Well, you, you just you know, even just in general, <laughs> because obviously the six do uh, Doom creating Doom weapons are the strongest of all the Doom weapons. But of those six, uh, Doomed Glaive is probably the absolute best, uh, arguably. And the main reason for this is the type of synergies that it has, particularly how good it can be with a synergy with... Um, uh, gob truffles. Other than that, you can also end up using it for the fact that it has green storm. It has storm into itself while also having entangle. It is such an insanely good combo because it does a bunch of mass explosion, clears the entire board, gets you a bunch of mana because of the cascaded greens that you'll get, which will feed right back into itself. And on top of all of that, 
it has Entangle First Enemy, which is obviously good since you're doing a Skull Spam, so in case you're frozen in some kind of situation, or any other kind of predicament where it might end up ending your turn, like accidentally misclicking it, at least it'll Entangle the enemy, so you won't take as much damage. Of course, Doom Skull still can hit somewhat through Entangle, however, it would greatly uh, reduce the amount of damage that they would do. So overall, insanely good combinations with all the uh, perks that ends up getting, on top of the fact that its ability itself is already among one of the better ones, just to, to do two troop synergy. As I mentioned, Guardian Crown, only available this week. If you want to pick it up, it is here. Uh, not a must-have, however, um, if you want it, it is here. And you can also pick it up for 410 gems instead, which I would personally say is the advised way to do it through the uh, faction event. And other than that, uh, Hope's Crescent is actually somewhat relevant. Um, definitely Doomed Glaive is higher priority. If I was to place priority order, it's definitely Doomed Glaive, Hope's Crescent, and Guardian Crown. Since uh, all the faction ones tend to rotate a little bit quicker than the uh, uh, kingdoms, since there's less factions at the moment. But uh, whereas there's more kingdoms. But as far as this, it's an okay weapon. It's very situational though, but it's particularly good in early game. Uh, mainly because of what it boost ratios off of. It eliminates all armor from an enemy and then deals uh, some damage to them. And then if the enemy's life is greater, it deals triple damage. Obviously, if you're in a situation where the enemy's life is constantly going to be greater than yours, this could be pretty good because not only are you going to tear through all their armor, but you're also going to be doing a pretty substantial amount of damage. Uh, the main uh, area where Hope's Crescent is absolute best is if you can get triple damage on the enemy and that triple damage will one-shot everything on the opposing team. If you're in a range where the amount of magic you'll have on this will be able to do that, and in your HP range will also be able to do that, then it's highly worth considering as you can one-shot the enemy team every single time per cast. Uh, still not the absolute greatest weapon in the game, but it's worth considering. And uh, it's particularly good in early game since obviously almost everything in early game will have a higher HP than you when you're fighting like three trophy PvP and uh, pet battles and any other real p uh, any other uh, piece of content out there for the most part will of course end up having higher stats than you overall from early game mid game so is worth considering. Uh, but Doomed Glaive, definitely highest priority. Other than that, let's go and mess around with a few things. Obviously, I did want to go show a uh, Truffle team. Truffle obviously being very relevant in that we just got the components for it. Uh, Warden is available to power level this week, which is one of the few things it's even useful for is this team. And uh, Doomed Glaive also ended up coming in uh, right now, and you have all week to go and trying to get that. If you happen to not have enough of the color thing, all you have to do is go and um, farm them off of uh, pet battles. So uh, try to get your guild to do a little bit more pet battles, and whenever you have a green pet, you'll be able to get anywhere from like 50 to 100 something of them uh, every single time you do it based on luck. And uh, you can end up accumulating a decent amount of them off of that and just go from there. So right here, of course, we just double up. Uh, we already got infinite loop. We can kind of tell just by the board based on how much mana we have. And now we just keep going with everything. Uh, when we want to go speed it up, uh, whenever we have alignment, we can go and just throw down the doomed glaive. And I'll end up doing a lot of damage and basically cleaning everything else up that's uh, left on the board. Hopefully we'll get alignment right here. It looks like we do, so we'll just go do that. And as you can see, we get skull to skull and it just wipes them all out. And that is the power of Doomed Glaive, uh, arguably the best team in the game as well, or among one of them. It's one of my personal favorite, personally, anyways. But uh, it's definitely pretty far up there as far as overall strength, and it also has the most consistent loop in the entire game. Uh, it might not be the absolute quickest for everything, however, it is undeniably the most consistent infinite loop that exists. Uh, they nerfed a while back every single infinite loop in the game for the most part. However, this and a few other options as of recently, like Vespera, have pretty solid near infinite loops or literal infinite loops. As long as this thing doesn't get frozen, this team right here, uh, you can pretty much never stop looping with this exact team combination. Uh, when you have a double the green, when you have two truffles like this, and when you have a uh, green storm in play, uh, that combination of factors basically makes it so you can't end up losing your turn ever, assuming you're not frozen. So it's a pretty cool combo. And most often than not, you don't even need, necessarily need the Doomed Glaive, but it is a nice utility since you're creating so many browns and then you can convert those browns into pure damage while also refreshing the Green Storm because most other variants of weapons will not be able to refresh the Green Storm in a timely manner. Whereas if you have alignment, that will zero turn uh, give you mana while doing a full AoE. Uh, while giving you the storm that you need. So uh, a lot of things you end up getting, plus a whole board clear. So a lot of utility in that. So highly advise doing it. Uh, it's my personal favorite team, honestly, in the entire game right now. Uh, and uh, basically everything is available for uh, this week. And if you want to go get King Gob Truffle, you just throw shards at uh, Amethrax Kingdom, or Faction, I should say, which is all the way over uh, here. You just throw shards at this, and you'll eventually end up getting a, bu a bunch of copies of that. You can see it right there as a uh, drop. And other than that, um, yeah, definitely go consider it. And Farge Trolls just random luck off of uh, Glory Gym Guild and uh, VIP Chess. So uh, if you want to get him, he's just pure luck out there, unfortunately. Actually, let me double check. Is he available in Soul Forge right now? I normally don't bother mentioning those 
However, there's sometimes uh, occasionally good epics in here that you might want to consider on occasion. Uh, you do have to waste your color things, and we got even more things for that recently as, of course, deeds. Uh, so you might not necessarily want to waste it necessarily on those between weapons, deeds, and everything. However, um, it is possible to craft... Um, uh, epics here. And you do normally want to keep an eye out for it in case something that you're missing that you really want is there. But nope, unfortunately no Forest Guardian, I would have said, because then you could have gotten it within a 1 in 8 chance. But nope, unfortunately none this week. Anyways, let's go to the other teams real quick. So, as far as uh, Hall of Guardians, uh, you can end up running uh, Mountain Christian into Triple Gargoyle, or if you have it, Stone Slicer into Triple Gargoyle. Either or will work. Uh, obviously, Gargoyle you get from the faction itself too, so uh, you're already going to get a few if you buy up into the faction. Like if you were to go and get, uh, if you were to go get the crown, I think you get like two or three copies of Gargoyle just from doing that. So uh, you'd already have it just by doing that. So that'd be pretty cool, pretty easy to build, and everyone has Mountain Crusher, Stone Slicer. You might not have, however, it would be slightly better with Stone Slicer, and I might be running that later when I run it with it. Other than that, if you want to go uh, deeper, one of my personal for uh, Ford is uh, Yasmin's Pride with a Cockatrice into uh, Catcher's the Bull. You could either use a second catches the bull or another utility or another damage source really just depends on what you have i personally just run it with double of him but uh whole premise of course is that you feed uh use yasmin's pride gain a bunch of hp off of it uh cockatrice you can end up using as an entangle mana drain uh combo to make sure that they can't do anything to you and then catchers will get a bunch of boost ratio off of that hp and then be able to kill everything also that hp will allow it so you don't die and uh pretty much be good to go also this would run with shaman hero class just so you can end up getting the 50 percent uh starts that you need in order to uh, get the team rolling just a little bit quicker than it uh, normally would be able to and you run it with hp just so you can get an even higher amount of damage for your catchers while having longer survivability as you go later into the delves as far as pure faction i have still not been able to do this unfortunately uh without using potions i don't know i might finally just bite the bullet next time and go do it i definitely won't be doing it this event personally but um We've been trying. I've tried so many combinations. I still feel like Double Silent Sentinel, Double Gargoyle is one of the better ways to go. But uh, we've tried almost every combination. I haven't been able to do it without potions. But uh, with potions, it should easily be able to get it done. Double Silent Sentinel, Double Gargoyle. The biggest issue is just not having enough stats, more often than not. Biggest threat is the final Gargoyle on the final battle. Uh, it's in second slot, and you need to have enough Gargoyle damage of your own to be able to go and kill their Gargoyle before their Gargoyle kills you. And if you don't have enough stats for it, then you lose. But however, with Barrier Effect and Chant and all that other stuff that you get from potions, it should be pretty easy to end up doing with Double Silent Sentinel, Double Gargoyle if you so choose to go for it. Uh, other than that, uh, for the uh, class event, uh, pretty easy class event. You're restricted to Magrim Woods and Beast, and while that doesn't leave you with a lot of options, one option that does leave you with is Spirit Fox and has some power, and I even have Adachi all the way upgraded on gold too. That's not necessary, but uh, it does gain a little bit extra magic that way. And uh, you can just spam true damage and uh, get a bunch of mana drain. Make sure they never cast on you and then just clean them up with a mang or some kind of other weapon. Uh, just use mang there as it can upscale all the way if you need to. Uh, you can just tank with titan and uh, you'll just have a one-shot skull uh, capabilities as well. And other than that, I guess we'll go run this team. Um, this is an early game team, so I might want to go and fight it against something slightly lower. However, we technically want them to have a higher HP than us. So let's see, what are we currently set to? Not HP. Unfortunately, I think our stats are so high that we have a higher HP than whoever our enemy is here. Obviously, this meant more toward early game. However, uh, yeah, I guess we'll go test this out real quick and just see. So this, um, this is uh, obviously geared towards uh, early game, mid game. Uh, main premise of this is we're going to go and, oh no, we got a freeze on us, uh, use Hope's Crescent as a good majority of our damage. I believe we're in an instance where I unfortunately cannot Hope's Crescent anything for triple damage, and he does not have a life gain, so we won't really be able to use uh, uh, Crescent the proper way in this particular battle, it looks like. However, we will be able to go use the fact that we can gain a bunch of stats to go and uh, buff up our first two slots and uh, end up taking out the battle that way instead, which seems like the way we're going to have to do it because we might not have much of another option. So we're still frozen there. We do have a Hope's Crescent. Um, if nothing else, this does still do armor tier. So, of course, we can do this on first slot in order to uh, start working down his uh, team. And uh, we just kind of do that one by one and start uh, poking them out. We also still have the double damage to other greens, so we can do that to go kill the uh, Leprechaun. Obviously, this team being a little bit more geared towards killing actual other uh, green teams. And since you're creating so much green, you can basically utilize that to kill all the other greens so that the greens you put onto the board won't end up helping out the uh, enemy as much. So unfortunately, it does look like he's going to pop the Doom thing there. Of course, the Doomed weapon's insanely good, uh, including the Doomed Glaive that is available uh, right now in uh, Soulforge. Uh, he'll get a poke, unfortunately, or luckily, uh, his 20% uh, armor reduction, uh, or his 20% uh, score reduction is coming into play a little bit there, so that helped. Uh, we'll go take this blue off the top, we're not frozen anymore, unfortunately we don't gain any benefit off of extra turns now that our uh, one troop ended up dying, but I think we're still going to be able to make it through. So right here, we can destroy a row, 
gain a bunch of life to him. Uh, we can actually do that to gain enough life to protect ourselves from uh, dying here. So I think we actually are going to go down that route just to make sure that, uh, well, we don't die. So we'll also be able to go for a skull chance there. Didn't get it, but we got some other cascades uh, coming in, so not too bad. We'll go for a double damage there. Uh, we still have the Hunter's Mark, so that will be able to help us out there. I did end up going down the Archer route with this. Uh, you could use pretty much any green hero class, but uh, I did end up picking Archer specifically. So right here, we'll go and uh, still have a Convert. Uh, we are not frozen on it. However, we're not really going to be gaining much of a benefit other than a Hunter's Mark. But I guess it's still worth it for the Hunter's Mark just to make sure that we can end up uh, killing it. So now if we take a Skull, if we happen to be able to find one, that will be enough to uh, secure it to kill. So we'll go get the Poke over there. Uh, does his HP go up? Well, if nothing else, our HP could go down. So one other odd thing about Hope's Crescent too, since uh, it is based on your HP, the extra damage, uh, one strategy that you could technically do with it, kind of similar to a Hydra, is actually deliberately take damage on yourself so that you will be able to go do triple damage to the enemy. A little bit of a weird combo, however, it works. Uh, so right here, I might actually want to go wait. I don't know, I kind of want him to poke us. There's no guarantee way we can give him a poke though. So you know what, we're just going to go the offensive route. Unfortunately, I was hoping we get a triple on him, but at this point, I think we just try aiming for a skull. Deny is red because obviously he's going to try for that weapon any second now, and that's definitely the biggest threat we have to deal with right here. Unfortunately, not much of a pickup here for the board. I guess we just take some green and uh, start moving that up. Uh, he is going to go do his thing. Uh, we have no way to really counter that. What do you deny again? You deny all blues. So we could just go destroy this row. He does have a destroy row, of course, and we could use this for some board control just to get rid of his alignment. And it looks like we completely got rid of his alignment. He does end up creating one additional Doom Skull there. However, it misses, so we just go for all that mess. And uh, looks like we should be good to go. Uh, Hope's Crescent again, since our HP's... Uh... Oh, no! So... Nice, finally, we took enough damage. So now that our HP is lower than the enemy, we can actually use Hope's Crescent for what it's intended for. So obviously, best time to ever use Hope's Crescent is when you have a less HP than the enemy. Ideally, you would always be in that position, though with how high stats we have, with pretty much the highest you could possibly have, that doesn't happen that often unless we're playing other pieces of content. But uh, now that we are lower than her HP, this will do triple damage, which means we just tore through all of its uh, armor and did triple uh, whatever damage Hope's Crescent would have done. So that was about, what, 150 damage, and that was all through the armor, uh, completely ignoring the armor and just to its HP value. So you can get a pretty substantial amount of damage out of it, especially if you end up setting additional magic to it if you want to go down uh, that route. But anyways, guys, I'll pretty much wrap it up for this video. If you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, of course, we'll be going over uh, Bounty Hunter this Friday once we end up getting the Bounty Troop. And, of course, don't forget to go pick up the pet tomorrow on Wednesday, as that is a unique pet. You will be able to get it soon after, so it's not one of those ones that will come in and basically never come again. It will be one of them that will be coming back uh, into the drop table, I believe it's a month after the fact, or a week after the fact. I forget how they redo pets these days, but uh, um, it is one of the actual bonus ones, so it will be coming in soon after after it's not one of the ones that just comes once and then never comes again so um not too big a deal if you accidentally miss it however obviously if you're going to be around definitely don't miss it anyways guys catch you later have a wonderful end of the week have a wonderful holiday as it is fastly approaching and stay warm out there with all the uh, snow goodbye everyone and thanks for watching